I want this place to be a symbol for what happens when you help a pony like the courier. Or moved closer to the dead apple slice, pulling the stakes out of her hooves and catching her as she fell. Ignoring the decaying elder, she slowly carried her down and set her body gently on the ground. Then she slowly closed her lifeless eyes. I agree with you, Shadow. There is no way I'm going to let Elder Apple Slice kill her go unpunished. Wingnut was hanging back, looking over the dead mare. When Aura finished setting down the Elder, he asked, Is she really the leader of the Steel Rangers? Stardust nodded his head. Yeah, she was a good mare, too. I've never trusted Steel Rangers, but she was kinder to me than most Steel Rangers. She could have turned Aura and me away when she showed up at the bunker, without Shadow, but she chose to believe us, for the most part. I moved closer to the former Elder, and the question is, who did this, and why? I mean, the word traitor over her body tells me it had to be a Steel Ranger. I'm not sure who it was, Aura said. Apollo's known, and the Hidden Sands steal rangers for as long as I've been alive. None of them would do this to Apple Slice. They all respected her too much. Same for her father. Maybe. But they weren't the only steel rangers around here. The Los Alicorn Rangers were here too. From the stories about Wolfsbane I've heard, he's more than capable. And that's true. And he does have a grisly reputation. Though he's also known to uphold the code of the Steel Rangers to a T, he wouldn't do something like this to another elder. From what Apollo told me, when he took over as the elder for the Los Holocorn branch, he brought his former elder up on traitorous charges. The other four, star paladins and two senior scribes, tried him and they had him executed. Aura said as she looked over the body, what if some other faction did this to them, and tried to make it seem like the rangers did this to her? Wingnut asked. All of a sudden, a voice came from behind us. It was Steel Rangers. And from what's been going on around here since you left, I'm guessing it was the Hidden Sands Rangers. We all twisted around to see none other than Detective Lonely Heart standing a few feet away, cigarette still poking out of his muzzle. We all lowered our weapons, as I said. Lonely Hearts? What are you doing all the way out here? I could ask you the same thing, Shadow. I was on my way to Cartwheel when I heard voices off the road. Thought I'd come see what was going on, he said, blowing out a long stream of smoke. We were just getting back when, we, when our friend Windthrasher spotted the dead rangers from the air, and I said. Why were you heading to Cartwheel, Lonely Hearts? Stardust asked. I was heading there to see if Box Tape knew where you were and when you'd be back. Didn't think I'd run any on my way, he said as he walked closer to the dead rangers, looking closely at the holes in their armor. Aura walked closer to him, asking, Tell me, Detective, how do you know this was done by the Hidden Sand Steel Rangers? He looked up from the dead ranger. I'm guessing you haven't been listening to Mr. New Pegasus or DJ Pony while you were away. Duh, we were all the way up in Mill City Wasteland, Wingnut said. And there's a lot you should know about what's happening while you've been gone. First of all, the Steel Rangers from this area have been making more of a presence over the last past week. More than we've seen in ten years. They've been starting fights with the NLR and the Romans, making their presence felt in more of the smaller towns near Hidden Sands, and taking down any ponies who stand up against them. That doesn't mean it was the Hidden Sand Steel Rangers. The Lost Holocron branch has been around here as well, I said. You aren't wrong, but the airship hasn't been seen for a while now, and all the Steel Rangers that have been fighting against the NLR have declared they're fighting for the Hidden Sands Rangers. They're being led by a mayor called Sapphire, he said. Also, the only group of ponies that would be able to take down ponies here has to be Steel Rangers. The NLR have the weapons to do this, but they'd never go this far from New Pegasus. The Enclave's been silent for about a week now as well, so they can be ruled out. Raiders don't have this kind of weaponry to do this, and I haven't heard a peep from the Fiends for a little over a while now. Wait, 
Did you say Sapphire? I said as my jaw dropped open. No. There's no way she'd ever do something like this. She respected that rapper slice. The synth just shrugged. I have no idea. I've been meaning to look into what's been going on, but I've been busy with finding your mom, Shadow. I don't deal with the rangers much, as you know, and they don't like synths. I just know what I've seen and heard from friends of mine in the NLR. Yeah, now, there is one way to find out. See if you can get him on the broadcaster, Aura said. You know what? It's a great idea, I said. Before I could even bring up the broadcaster, I heard another voice from behind the hill. One I knew very well. It was Ravane. Windthrasher, is that you? Where's Shadow and the rest? I heard Ravane say. She's just around the hill, Windthrasher said. You may not want to look, though. I think some steel rangers died. What the hell's Ravane doing here? I said as I started to head towards the bend in the hill. I'll be right back. Wait a moment. You cannot be Paladin Vervain, Yaksha said. I thought that you disappeared and died many years ago. I just got around the bend when I saw Vervain looking curiously at Yaksha. I am. And who are you, Zebra? Wait a moment. Yaksha? I looked between the Zebra and the mare who raised me. You two know each other? Yaksha nodded. Vervain here is one of the few steel rangers I knew when I lived around here. Our first interaction was not a good one. Vervain laughed slightly and blushed a long moment out of embarrassment. Yeah, I was a little rowdy back then. Yaksha would never let me live it down, either. Nope, it is a little hard to forget. Indeed, but it got better with time. Yes, it did. Vervain is a decent mare compared to most I have run into and lived with back in my day. Ten years ago, I heard a rumor that she had disappeared, which later, the story became that she had died during a mission with another mare I knew for a short time. Vervain looked over at me, asking, I heard that Yaksha died some years ago protecting a tribe from certain disaster. Where on Equus did you find her? At the kingdom near Saint's Parish in Winnapolis. She helped me when I was attacked by Wrath. She came back with us to help me with my magical control and a couple of other things, I said. Fascinating. Well, Yaksha, I'm glad to see you're still alive, Vervain said with a smile. The fueling is mutual, Vervain. Wait a moment. Is Vervain the mare you wanted to see when you came back here? I asked, remembering the one reason she came back as well was to find the mare who was friends with her and who she thought was dead. Yaksha shook her head. No, like I said before, I thought Vervain was dead. The mare I am looking for is still very much alive, though I am not sure where she is. Vervain walked closer to me and gave me a quick hug. I'm glad you're finally back, Shadow. Then she looked back at Yaksha. Thank you, for Yaksha, for helping Shadow. It means the world to me. No, oh, I did not know that you had a daughter, Vervain. I thought you said that you could not have children. Yaksha said. Wait a moment. I remember her saying that she couldn't have foals before, but I think it was just part of her deception as auntie in Stable 28. The look on Vervain's face, though, told me what Yaksha said was true. She looked utterly heartbroken as the zebra said that. It's not something I like to talk about, Yaksha, Vervain said. Yaksha looked down, covering her muzzle with a hoof. I am sorry, Vervain. That was insensitive of me. I was not thinking. I had assumed Jachato knew. Ravain shook her head as she smiled, looking over at me. It's okay, Yaksha. But no, Shadow isn't my daughter. She's Scribe Grimoire's daughter, but I've raised her for the past eight years. As close to being my daughter as I'm ever going to get. And I love her as much as my own foal. Anyway, the time for catching up can wait. Let's get back to what's going on. What's this about dead steel rangers? Ravain said, looking over at me. I was just trying to figure that out when I heard you, I said. Why are you here? I thought you were still in Stable 28. I was, until last night. I decided that Milkshake was doing fine without me, and if she has any problems, she knows I'm not far. I needed to check up on my father, so I headed a cartwheel. I heard earlier that a sky carriage with the words Equestrian Express on the side was spotted not far from here. I blinked, surprised. 
Who told you that? Mr. New Pegasus, Vervain replied. I face hoofed. Of course, he did. Vervain smiled and laughed lightly before going back to being serious. I figured it was you, so I was watching the skies. I saw the sky carriage, and when you landed a mile or so from town, I thought something was wrong, so I came to check it out. Shadow, how much longer are we going to stay here? Windthrasher asked. When I looked over at her, I could see she was getting a stranger look to her, almost like a starving animal looking for its first meals in days. Because I'm not feeling well. I'm not sure, Windthrasher. If you want, you can head into town and wait for us there. I said. One of her eyes twitched and I saw a little red glow show up in her eyes. I'm okay, I think. She licked her lips slowly and started to drool. No, you're not, Windthrasher. I think you need to go into town. You don't look so good. Hey, Shadow! What's going on? Stardust said as he came walking around the bend. Windthrasher unhooked herself from the sky carriage and started to slowly walk towards the small hill. Her voice was charging up to Sharp's voice. I'm okay, Shadow. Really, it's just... Something smells so good. I can handle just a small taste. Just a little. Fuck. I said, walking over to my friend, whose eyes were now fully glowing bright red. Wind Thrasher, snap out of it. You don't want to go over there. She snapped her head towards me and hissed. Don't tell me what I do or do not want to do, Shadow. I'm not that weak. I backed up a little but stood my ground. Windthrasher, there's a coming to the bloodlust again. She flared her wings and hissed again. No, I'm not. It's not even fresh blood. You don't know anything about me. I can handle a little taste. Just a little bit. Now get out of my way. Stardust walked over to her, ignoring her hissing. Whoa, Windthrasher, calm down. Shadow's just looking out for you. Shut up. She started to say, baring her teeth at him. Stardust cut her off by taking her face between his hooves and saying gently, Listen to me, Windthrasher, and look into my eyes. You know how you get when you smell blood, even old blood. You told me about it while we were talking yesterday. Remember? I thought she was going to attack him, but she seemed calm when he touched her face. But I'm okay. No, you're not. Now I want you to do as I say, he said calmly. I want you to take a deep breath through your mouth, then slowly let it out through your nose. But I... No buts, just trust me, Windthrasher, he said. Okay. She said, then she slowly took in a deep breath, just like Stardust said. Then she let it out. Good. Now again... In, and out. In, and out. He said, breathing with her. Slowly, the glow started to leave her eyes. A minute later, she fell against Stardust. I think I feel better. I'm sure you do. But how about for right now, we go to Cartwheel, so you can rest and get something nice to drink from old box tape. Do you think you can handle that? She nodded. I think so. Thank you, Stardust. He helped her up. It's no problem. Then he looked back at me. I've got her. We'll meet you in town. Good idea. Don't worry about the sky carriage. I'll make sure it gets back to town. I said as he turned to help Windthrasher up the road. I'll go with them. I do not think I am needed here, and I may have a brew that can help Windthrasher. Yaksha said, turning to follow. We can talk later, Vervain. I would like to see what you have been up to ever since we've stuck the last few years. The same for me, Yaksha. Vervain said with a smile. When they were gone, she looked back at me, asking, So, that was strange. Is Windthrasher going to be okay? She was around a lot of blood when we were in Stable 28, and she didn't get like that. I think something's wrong with her. She lost control in Annapolis. I think it's getting harder for her to control her bloodlust, I said, watching as my friends vanished up the road. Vervain was watching them, too. 
You should keep an eye on her. If she starts to get worse, there's a possibility she'll attack one of you. Don't worry. I'm sure she'll be okay. We have a doctor who lives in the Annihilators, looking into it. I hope he's figured something out. I'd hate to see her do what she did back in Winnapolis. I said. Vervain turned back towards me. Well, since it's all taken care of, let me see these dead rangers you mentioned. I gestured towards the hill. I'll show you. I led her around the hill where Oro, Wingnut, and Lonely Hearts were waiting. When she saw the dead rangers and all her apple slice, she gasped. That can't be the Elder. Raid so, Lonely Hearts said. He was examining the Elder's body closely. From the looks of it, she was tortured for a while before she was killed. Her body shows signs of being beaten. It's hard to tell because of how long she's been out here. The elements and other factors may have destroyed most of the evidence. Vervain took a step back when she saw Lonely Heart's face. Celestia, are you a synth? Great deductive powers you have there, he sled, still closely looking at the body. I sighed. Auntie Vervain, this is Detective Lonely Hearts, from New Pegasus. He's been looking for Mom's past for me. He's not like the synths you've heard stories about. Oh, I've heard about Lonely Hearts. I just didn't think he was a synth, that's all. She looked closer at the body. Yeah, that's Elder Apple Slice. So that's where she's been. Aura looked at her confused. What do you mean? I was told by Sandstorm last night that she went missing over a week ago. He figured she was dead. You talked to Star Paladin Sandstorm last night? I asked. It's just Sandstorm now. He was banished from the Rangers a few days ago. He didn't like how the new Elder took over, and what she's been doing. They argued, and he accused her of killing Apple Slice. So Elder Sapphire kicked him out of the Steel Rangers, she said. My father isn't going to like this. He's known Apple Slice since she was a foal. So Sapphire did take over the role of Elder. And I said with a deep sigh. There has to be more to this. I'm sure there is. But we don't know until some pony looks more into it. Lonely Heart said. I'll see what I can find around here and I'll let you know. You really want to investigate the death of a Steel Ranger Elder? I asked. He shrugged. The rangers might not like my kind, but she's still murdered, and her killer should be brought to justice. From the sound of it, you cared for her shadow. Yeah, she was nice to me, even if she did send me in a stable nine to get her a pip buck. Then I'll see what I can find out. We should see about lying the bodies to rest. It's not right to just leave them out here to rot, Ravain said. Lonely Hearts nodded. Good idea. Though, wait till a little later to do that. I want to see what I can find out from them before Hoof. I took one more glance at the Elder, then looked away. Just let me know as soon as you can. I want to make sure that whoever killed her pays. Oh, and didn't you say you had something you needed to tell me? I did. Lonely Heart said, walking over to me. I was able to track your mother's movements over the past two years through some contacts of mine and a little help from a freelance griffin who owed me a favor. I know that she went to Hoovington and Manhattan during that time, but not much else, I said. She also went up north, either the kingdom or further. She was still looking for the same pre-war project. During the time, she hired scores of griffins to help her get memory orbs from different places, or to protect her when she went into old stables. The reason she went to Hoofington the first time, as I told you before, was to find Stryker. But she went back not too long ago, trying to find information on some program called EC-1101. I'm not sure what it is, but she thought it would help her unlock this project she's trying to find. Either she found it, or figured it wouldn't do what she wanted, because she came back here. She started to work out of an old shack near Trotston, during that time going by the name Spell. She would do odd jobs for ponies as well, but that's not the interesting thing. From the information I got, it looks like she's sending messages to ponies in the Enclave, another up north, and oddly enough, some pony in Los Alicorns. Well, the Los Alicorn thing shouldn't be too much of a surprise, 
She was working with Elder Boof's Bane, right? I asked. Only Heart smiled. And that's the interesting thing. The transmissions weren't being sent to their base out there, or to their airship. It was going to another system located somewhere in the heart of the city. I'm not sure what she was up to, but some pony out there is working with her, and it's not the Steel Rangers. My eyes went wide. The Ministry. Bingo. If any pony could find them, it would be her. And she's also smart enough to talk her way into that place. Didn't you say she went to Lost Holocorn Shadow? Wingnut asked. Yeah, that's the information I was able to learn. I said. Something still isn't adding up, though. Why is she doing all of this? Couldn't tell you, kid. Lonely Heart said. I'm not sure what she's planning or what she's doing. But I do know that she's helping the Enclave and the Ministry. Either she's a double agent, which I wouldn't put past her, or the Enclave is helping the Ministry. Fuck. I guess that means if I want answers, I'll have to go there and confront her. The problem is, how do you plan on finding them? Lonely Heart said. Personally, I always thought they were a myth. But I know since are real, and they've come from somewhere. Vervain said. Finding them shouldn't be a problem. Mr. Topps already figured out where they were and gave him the location and a way to get in. Ah, and I bet this is going to be so much fun, Aura said, rolling her eyes. Wingnut smiled. I don't mind going. I bet they have some amazing tech there. For right now, I'm not going to worry about her. I need to figure out what's been going on here while we were away. I said. A lot of shit, honestly. Lonely Heart said. There have been more attacks on caravans lately. The Queens are on the verge of war with the NLR. The Romans have taken more land, and the Steel Rangers are taking over as well. It's like when you left. The entire area went crazy. I face hoofed. Fuck. Why did it have to go wrong while I'm away? I just wanted to get back here and relax for a bit so I could think about what to do next. Aura put a talon on my shoulder. Shadow, you can't fix everything. I think we should get back to Cartwheel and take a couple more days to recuperate. I know. But I feel like if I don't do something now, then things will just get worse. That may happen, but you can't do much about it right now. Aura said with a smile. Let's go see Box Tape and we'll go from there. I think that's a good idea. We'd be happy to see you safe and sound, Vervain said. Fine, but only for a day. After that, we need to find out what we can to fix things. Starting with Elder Sapphire, I said, then looked back to Lonely Hearts. I added, Thank you for the information, Lonely Hearts. Also, when you figure out something, please let me know. Can do, kid. I'll check up with you later tonight or tomorrow morning at Equestrian Express. He said, going back to looking over the bodies. I nodded, then looked back at Aura, Vervain, and Wingnut. Guess we should head back to Cartwheel? That's fine with me. Just as long as we come back later and get the bodies. Vervain said. Lonely Hearts waved his middle hoof. Don't worry. I'll be sure to get them back for you. Just leave that sky carriage behind. I can use it to transport all the bodies back to Cartwheel. I waved back at Lonely Hearts. Okay, Detective. Let Stardust know when he comes back for it. We all started to head back down the road. As we did, I asked for Vane. What do I do if Sapphire is the one who killed the Elder? Aura spoke first. You find out why she did it, and if it was just so she could have all the power, then you kill her. No matter the reason she had for killing Elder Apple Slice, Sapphire should not have killed her. From what's been going on here lately with the Rangers, and from what Sandstorm told me, I'm sure she's the one who did it, Ravane said. Sapphire was the one who saved me from the raiders when I came out of the stable for the first time. She also helped me take down the camp and get the hostages home safe. She also made sure I got into hitting sands and spoke in my defense when I first smelled apple slice. I don't understand why she'd do something like this. You'll have to talk to Sandstorm about that. All I know about Sapphire is that she doesn't believe in the code of the Steel Rangers. She's one of those mares who believes we should help ponies in the wasteland, like the New Lunar Republic says they do. 
not just hold tech. Components like that to say that what the Ministry Mayor Applejack wanted were the Steel Rangers back when she founded us, Vervain said. Wait, I thought the Steel Rangers did do that, I said. Aura laughed. Yeah, they used to. Now they'll save you if you can help them get something, or if you have something that they want. They don't go out of their way to help the Wasteland. That's why they're hated the most in the Wasteland. Ravain sighed. That's true, for the most part. I used to be like that before I met Grimm. After a couple of years being around her so much, I started to think, much like my father and some other rangers did. So you're more like what you think Sapphire is now? I asked. Not really the same, but I do think we could use the tech and power we have to help. We don't need to hoard all the tech we have, that we found, when it's just going to sit around and not be used. From what I've learned, Sapphire is using what the Steel Rangers have to take over New Pegasus. I wonder if she wants to make the Steel Rangers as powerful as they were before my father retired. What do you mean? Aura answered. The Steel Ranger used to hold a lot of land some years ago. Back when I was still pretty young, you couldn't go to most towns without running into a group of them. They even ran the crossroads trading post. But that was back before Elder Tap died and Elder Applejam took over. Ravain smiled. Yes, it's true too. Back then, we had a lot of ponies joining us and helping us grow the Steel Rangers. Who's Elder Tap? I asked. Oh! And that's Elder Tapioca. He was the elder before Elder Applejam. He was a good stallion and well-liked by most of the ponies, Ravain said. If they had so much power back in the day, then what happened to make them lose it all? Elder Applejam wasn't as good of a leader as Elder Chap was. He knew it too. That's why every pony wanted my father to take over. But he refused. Elder Applejam was a good pony, but he liked to slack off. He'd hide from his duty when he thought he could get away with it. He also wasn't good with tactics of fighting. Over time, we lost a lot of our land and a lot of good ponies. When the NLR moved in, it just made it that much harder. And that's about as much as I know. I was in Los Alicorn for most of Elder Applejam's first few years as Elder. I only came back a year or so before I met Grimm, Ravain said. We were just getting past the gate, led in a cartwheel as I asked. How did you meet Mom, anyway? I remember a night when Steel Rangers saved us from a manticore, but I was having one of my bad days and wasn't awake for most of it. She looked at me curiously. You remembered that? I sure do. I guess it slipped my mind out of your vein. What do you mean? I asked quizzically. I got most of my memories back while I was in Winnapolis. How did that happen? I knew you'd get your memories back over time, but not that fast. I shrugged. I had to go in a machine that messed with memories to help Stardust remember who he was. While I was in there, the machine kept pushing me into my own head. Long story short, I was able to destroy the block, bomb put on my memories, and everything came flooding back in. Well, most of it. Still having trouble remembering Dad. She smiled. I'm very happy to hear that, Shadow. Well, apart from you not remembering your father. Anyway, yes, I met Grimm on the night you two were attacked by a manticore. I was working with another knight named Crackerjack at the time. He went on ahead of me to check out information we got about a special pit buck. He radioed me, saying that a manticore was attacking ponies at his location, so I ran to help. When I arrived, the monster was trying to rip Crackerjack in two. Your mother blasted him with a powerful spell, saving my companion. I was able to finish it off. You were working with Crackerjack? I asked. Isn't that the name of the raider boss you told me about? Or asked. It was. I knew it was a steel ranger, but I didn't know he worked with Vervain. Vervain looked confused. Crackerjack was the raider boss my father told me about. I knew he was an asshole, but I never thought he'd turn a raider. I wouldn't really call him a raider. More like a slaver and a bandit when I met him. He just ran a town of raiders that lived outside Cartwheel. He was trying to locate Stable 28. One of the memories I have of Mom showed the last time that they met. He met with her just after she left the stable. He'd run away from his new branch of rangers in Manhattan. I'll have to ask Sandstone about that when we get back. He was the lead star paladin back in those days. 
I wonder why he wanted to find the stable, Vervain said as we walked down the road into the Equestrian Express. He said something about Elder Wusbane. I think he was working with him. Vervain's look went dark. Wolfsbane. It seems that everything always leads back to that fucker. What does he have to do with all of this? Mom was working with him too. Even when she was working with Apple Jam and Apple Slice, I said. Vervain paused just outside the door to Equestrian Express. That I didn't know. I always thought Grimm was loyal to Hidden Sands. But if Wolfsbane got his claws onto her, then I guess I was wrong. I feel so used. I put a hoof on Auntie's shoulder. Don't feel like that. Mom did that to a lot of ponies. How is that supposed to make her feel better, Shadow? Wingnut asked. What I meant was, Mom did that to a lot of ponies. But she only trusted her vein with the information about who she was and where she came from. Other ponies that found out that she used to be in the Enclave ended up dead, or with the memories wiped, I said with a smile. Vervain did her best to smile, too. That's true. I guess I'm lucky she did trust me. See? Not so bad. Before she could respond, the door to Equestrian Express opened and an older stallion with a sandy coat and grayed red mane, goatee, and silvery blue eyes was standing there looking at us. Why are y'all standing around out here? Um, who are you? I asked. And where's box tape? Shadow, this is Sandstorm, Ravane said. Sandstorm, this is the courier. The hard edge on his face eased a little. Ah, we were expecting you. I'm glad Vervain was able to help you get back into town. As to box tape, he's resting at the moment. Come in and sit. Your other friends just arrived a few minutes ago. I walked past him, saying, Thanks to our paladin Sandstorm, it's nice to meet you as well. He put up a hoof. I'm not a star paladin anymore. Just call me Sandstorm. Oh, you can call him Sandy. I do, I know, I, I know I do, and he's acting all serious and stuff. Box tape said, slowly making his way down the stairs that led up to his apartments. I watched as the old buck slowly made his way down the steps. He looked like he aged ten years in the past week. He also moved slower than he had before. Was something wrong with him? Before I could ask for Vane, pushed past me and helped her father last couple of steps down. Dad, you shouldn't be out of bed. You are not in any condition to be up. Bah! I'm fine! I'm not gonna lie around like a weak foal when I'm my only employee comes back from a dangerous trip, he said with a weak chuckle. Aura looked worried as well. She moved up to help Vervain. Hey, old buck, what's wrong with you? You look really sick. Sandstorm sighed, saying, He used his power armor. I cocked my head to one side. Why would that make him sick? Boxtape finished getting down the steps, then walked over to me. Because my power armor is different than the rest of the Steel Rangers, the Sentinel armor has a few things that get injected into a pony to help them during a fight. Aura's face went dark as she asked, What kind of... help? Vervain looked sad as she answered for her father. It's a mix of dash, rage, and medics. Are you fucking insane? Do you know what that shit can do to you? Aura practically yelled. I'm surprised you're still alive. Box tape chuckled. My body's used to it. I've been using that armor for twenty years now. Back when I was still a star paladin, it was a set we found in an old hospital. It was originally called a prototype medical power suit. I tinkered with it for a couple of years to make it better for fighting. But its base function is to keep a pony going, even if they're close to death. Or an old fart like me. I had to train my body a lot to be able to handle that many chems. He did. And he also used to have a bad addiction to the stuff back when he was still a ranger, too. Sandstorm said. I wasn't happy to hear that you used it again. Ah, stop getting your cock in a knot. He stopped, then... Laughed harder. Cock in a knot! Ha <laughs> ha! 
That's a good one. Anyway, y'all are acting like I'm an old, frail buck. Because I'm old, but I'm not frail. I can handle it. I moved over to him. From the looks of it, you can't. He put a hoof on my shoulder. Shadow, I'm fine. This is just my body going through withdrawal. No, it looks like the cams messed with your system. Aura said. Like I said, I'm surprised you're still alive. Me too, Vervain said. This is why I wanted you to stay in Cartwheel. He looked at his daughter, then sighed. Fine. I'm sorry, Vervain. But I'd do it again in a heartbeat. If I hadn't come, y'all would have lost more ponies than you did. I'm an old buck, and even if using that suit kills me, I'm fine as long as I can make sure the next generation lives on. She sighed again. You're hopeless. He barked a laugh that quickly turned into a hacking cough. He waved a hoof to keep us away, then said, I may be hopeless, but at least I'm still fun. Vervain just rolled her eyes, then looked at Sandstorm. I almost forgot. Shadow found Apple Slice. His eyes went wide. Really? That's the best news I've heard all week. Is she all right? I shook my head. She's dead. Same for the ponies that were with her. I found her body just outside of Cartwheel. Well, Windthrasher found them. But I figured out who it was. Sandstorm's face fell. Damn. I had a feeling something like that would happen. Wait, did you say she's just outside of Cartwheel? Aura nodded. Yeah, we've got a detective that we know from New Pegasus looking over the bodies right now to figure out what happened. Ah, you must mean Lonely Hearts, Sandstorm said. He's the only detective I know from there. Wait, you know Lonely Hearts? I asked. I thought the Rangers hate synths. We do. But I met him a few times while I was just outside the Strip. I also met him before I was a full member of the Steel Rangers, back when I was still a colt. He's been around New Pegasus forever, and he is a good pony. He's a good customer, too, Box Tape said. Sandstorm isn't like the other Steel Rangers. That's why he used to help me out when I was still acting like a courier back in my prime. I should go look over the bodies as well. I need to know if Sapphire had anything to do with her death. Sandstorm said. I'll return later, Box Tape. Now go back to bed. Yeah, yeah. Don't keep hounding me, Box Tape said. Vervain looked between Sandstorm and her father. Do you want me to join you, Sandstorm? That'd be fine. You have a better eye than I do for this kind of thing. She turned back to look at me. I'll be back soon. I have a feeling you need to talk, Shadow, so I'll try not to take too long. Don't worry. I'm not going to sleep anytime soon. I'll be awake when you get back, I said. They both left. When they did, Stardust came in from the other room. Hey, Box Tape, do you have any more Sparkle Cola? Of course I do. But isn't one enough? He asked my friend. For me, yes. But Windthrasher says she's still thirsty, and she said it helps keep her f to feel better. Also, Yaksha wants to see if she can mix it with a brew of hers to help Windthrasher sleep. I think she needs it, Stardust said. Oh, fine. It's in the icebox. Just don't let that zebra take all my cola. It's not easy to find, as you'd think. Thanks, old-timer, Stardust said, then he looked over at me. We should find a place to rest up while we can. I'd like to give Windthrasher another day or two before we leave again. I'm not sure where we'd go. There isn't an inn here. We can always just sleep on the floor, Laura said. Stardust glanced at her. Maybe you can, but Windthrasher needs a real bed. Box Tape spoke up. <clears throat> Y'all can use Silver's place next door. No pony lives there now, and with her... Well, in a better place. I'm sure it'd be able to fit all of you. Yeah, now that's not a bad idea. Aura said. I, on other hoof, said, 
I don't know if I want to sleep there. There are too many memories for me there. Box tape gave me an understanding smile. I'm sure she would have wanted you to use it. She may be gone, but her memory still lives on in you and her friends. You can't just forget about her so you can feel better, Shadow. I guess you're right. I know I am, he said with a smile. Now, how about you all head over there and get settled in? Shadow, can you stay here for a little bit? I've been needing to talk to you, Boxtape said. I guess. I'll get Windthrasher and Yaksha and we'll head over there, Stardust said. I'll help, Wingnut said, bolting into the room past Stardust. Unless you need me, Shadow. I'll go with them and help Windthrasher. I may be able to do something to help her, too. I'm worried she's getting sick, and with her body the way it is, it may be affecting her differently than most ponies. Aura said. You should stay with Wingnut anyway. He is your employer. I'll be over shortly. I said with a smile. Good to know. I'll see you soon. Aura said, moving down to kiss me quickly before going back to help Windthrasher and Stardust. Once they were all out of the office, and on their way to the next door, Boxtape asked, Did I just see Aura Blood Talon kiss you? I blushed. Yeah. We kind of ended up together while we were at the kingdom. <laughs> Damn. Now aren't you a lucky filly? She's a good griffin. I'm happy to see you with someone like her. You mean you don't think it's weird for me to be with a griffin? I asked. He chuckled. <laughs> I've seen weirder things in my life, trust me. Now, uh, about you and Aura, I wanted to show you something before my daughter gets back and makes me go lay down like a foal who needs a nap. What did you want to show me? I asked as he let me past the main room and into the small living room. Box tape moved over to one corner and pulled open a hidden door. Something you need to see. As he started walking down the small steps allegedly looked like a cellar, I asked, I get that, but I wanted to know what I needed to see. Ignoring me, he asked, Shadow, how much do you know about Cartwheel? That caught me off guard. Only a little? When I was shopping with Silver the other day, I was here. They told me the town wasn't that old. They said it was founded a few years ago. It was. Thirty-four, to be exact. Before the town was founded, there wasn't much here but this old building, and the one next door where Silver Snip used to live. The Steel Rangers used it as an outpost back when I was still a young buck, he said, reaching the bottom of the steps and lighting a lantern. I jumped when a set of power armor met my gaze, not even three feet away from me. For a second, I thought someone was going to attack me. Then I realized it was just box tape's armor. Shit, don't scare me like that. Me chuckled. <laughs> you are all too jumpy. It's just a set of power armor. Yeah, but you never know if some pony's inside of it, just waiting to attack you. Nah, it's not hard to tell if a pony's in a set of armor like this. When the power armor's empty, it's quiet and lifeless. When a pony's using it, there's always a little bit of noise coming from them. It makes it impossible to sneak in. They always have a small hum to them, and a little light that seems to come from the visor. He said, moving forward to a small table that was on the other side of the room. Oh, I didn't know that. But I saw memory orbs of Pegasus, who used power armor for a sneak mission. Pegasi armor is different. It's made from a different material. True, they're both called power armor, but that doesn't mean the same thing. Steel Ranger armor was made with collaboration to the MWT and the MAS. It was made to protect ponies during the war. Applejack herself wanted to make sure that no pony would fall in battle the same way her brother Big Mac did during the attack at Shattered Hoof Ridge. Pegasi power armor was created by the Ministry of Awesome. Well, when I say created, I meant that it was more commissioned. The first set was really made by Rarity, who ran the Ministry of Image. Their armor was also made to protect Pegasi during battle, but it also had to be able to be light enough to fly with and still protect the ponies inside. That's why it was different. It's strong, powerful, and lightweight. It hardly makes a sound when it moves. 
and that's why it works so well for Pegasi, and why the Enclave is so powerful. One of the reasons, at least. Okay, I guess I get that too, but what does this have to do with why you came down here with me? He sat down on the small stool and leaned his body to the table. I wanted you to know something about me. Something I'm not even my daughter knows. Walking past the armor, I went to sit at the old buck. What is that, box tape? He looked over at me, and I saw tears in his eyes. I've been lying to you since I first met you, Star. For a second, my heart stopped. Why? Did you just call me that? No pony calls me that. No pony but... Your dad. He said with a sigh. Wait. You're not my... You can't be. He smiled and shook his head. I ain't saying that. No. I just happen to know your father, Shadow. I've met him ten years ago. But... how? He first came here looking for your mom. I met her the same day she came to talk about a too supple cloak. Silver's mom. I met you too that day, though you were a little out of it at the time. Your dad showed up a few hours after your mom was here. At first, he... Th I thought he was a Dashite who just needed me to send a letter out for him. Then I realized he was Enclave. But he wasn't like any other Enclave soldier I'd met before. What did you say to him? What did he say to you? I asked, my heart pounding in my chest. He smiled a little and sighed. I don't remember it at all. Your mom made sure of that. But the memory spell did. On me eight years ago wasn't strong. She was in a hurry when she left Cartwheel. But I saw her memory of when she was here, when she escaped. You didn't even know her. He chuckled again. Oh, I knew her. I was just playing dumb. At first, I thought she'd forgotten that we once met before. She cried a little for a while, telling me about how sorry she was that she left you behind. Then she pulled away and told me she was sorry for what she was going to do. I told my head to the side. What do you mean? What did she do? I'm not sure, but the rest of the day is fuzzy. All I remember was waking up the next day in my bed, and a vague sense of meeting a mare from Stable 28, who told me she missed her daughter. Over time, I started to remember things, but not everything. I remember your dad, too, but not much about him. She somehow knew I was talking with him, and helping him locate you. He wanted me to let him know if Grim or you ever came back to Cartwheel, and if you did, to send a transmission to him right away. But why were you helping him? I thought Steel Rangers hated the Enclave. We do, but I'm not like most Steel Rangers, you see. A long time ago, when I was still very young, about your age, I was friends with a Pegasus, who was made a dashite when she was still very young like me. She was a beautiful mare, loved to sing. Her parents had died a few years before, and she was all alone. She was branded because she flew down here to the wasteland to help caravanners who were being attacked by some monster. And they made her a dashite for that? He nodded. That they did. Back then, you used to see a lot of dashites from Stratus. Even more than you do now. There's a reason the new Pegasus did so well. Mr. Topps made a deal with the Dashites that they could move to his city as long as they helped him rebuild it. But I'm getting off track. This mayor became friends with me and learned a lot about the Pegasi and the Stratus. I realized that not all the ponies from the clouds were bad. Because of that, I tried to learn a Pegasus story before assuming they were the enemy. That's why I listened to your father when he showed up at my door. I see. This mare you're talking about, were you too close? Very close. She was my best friend for many years. Even when I became a full-fledged deal ranger, I still had as much time as I could to see her. As he spoke, I could tell he was lost somewhere in the past. His eyes had a far-off look to them. Was this mare your wife? I asked. Oh, wait. 
I guess not. Your wife was a Steel Ranger too, huh? He gave me a cockside grin. You're a little brighter than you used to be. No, I didn't marry her, but I would have. Wisp was a good mare and very beautiful, full of life and kindness. I did fall for her, but she had eyes for another buck. That must have been hard. Maybe at first, but I respected her for telling me straight up and not leading me on. No, oh, it was thanks to her that I met White Oak. Good thing, too, because White Oak was the mare I was meant to be with. I wanted to hear more about my father, but I felt I needed to hear this, too. From the look on Box Tape's face, he didn't get to tell his story much. How did Wisp help you meet White Oak? She saved White Oak from a horde of ghouls. White Oak was just a filly back then, and her town was attacked by them. Wisp was flying over at the time and saw her on the roof of her home, screaming for help. She flew down and scooped her up and flew her to Appleton, where I was living at the time. Wait, you used to live in Appleton? I thought you were always in Cartwheel. He barked a laugh. I'm much older than this town, Shadow. No, I was a knight at the time, and the Steel Rangers had an outpost in Appleton. I took her from my friend and brought her to the bunker as soon as I could. Later, she became a scribe. So, if you were a knight back then and she was just a filly, I guess you were quite older than her? Dan, you fell for a filly? You're a pervy old buck, I said with a chuckle. Hey, now, Shadow, it ain't like that. Get your head out of whatever gutter it's in. No, I didn't see White Oak for a couple years after I left her at the bunker. Later, she was assigned to work with me, and later, we fell in love. When I, he spoke, I noticed he was looking at the wall just over my shoulder. Turning, I saw that it was filled with pictures, much like the cave Gigi kept hers in. The first picture I saw was a picture of a much younger box tape. Smiling, his big friendly smile, as a beautiful mare kissed his cheek. She reminded me a little of her vein. She wasn't as tall, but she had the same face as the mare who raised me. White Oak had a shiny white coat, a light brown mane, and dark green eyes mixed in. Her cutie mark was a white oak tree with bright green leaves on it. Is that her? I asked, even though I was sure that I knew the answer. Yes. That's her. Our friend Applejam took that picture on the day White Oak agreed to marry me. You two look cute together, I said as I scanned over the rest of his photos. There was another photo of them on their wedding day. It looked like they were married in Hidden Sands. Another showed the two of them laughing with a couple other ponies. I glanced over each photo as I saw Box Tape and his wife. I saw the mage. It was like watching Box Tape's life story flash before my eyes. His own personal timeline. It was then that I saw one white oak holding a small fool in her hooves as box tape looked down on one side, both looking like it was the happiest day of their life. Box tape noticed my gaze and said, Yes, that one's the day Vervain was born. One of the best days in my life. We named her after White Oak's favorite flowers. I was about to say something when I saw another photo a little further down from Vervain's. It was box tape and white oak standing in front of a question express. Only the building looked worn down and the sign wasn't there yet. Standing next to white oak, it was a young vervain with a big smile on her face. And next to box tape was a much younger colt frowning in the picture. Box tape? Who's that? That's my son. I looked back at him. Your son? I didn't know you had a son. A look of sorrow came to his face. I used to have a son, but no longer. He's dead. At least to me. How did he die? What I mean is, we don't speak. He doesn't see me as his father, and I don't see him as my son. We had a falling out a long time ago. A little while after, White Oak died. Damn, and I thought I had it bad with my mom. It's my fault, just like Vervain. I didn't live up to the role as father to either of them. I didn't want Vervain to join the Steel Rangers, but I made my son join. He was a good fighter and as smart as his mother. I pushed him too much, and in the end, I made him into a monster. 
Box tape said with a look of sorrow on his voice. I... He cut me off. Don't say you're sorry, Shadow. What happened with my son and myself isn't your fault. It's mine. I took a minute to look down at the wall a little more before asking, In this picture, why does the Equestrian Express look so run down? He perked up at that. Ah, that's the other thing I wanted to tell you. That picture was taken when I first opened up the shop. I took over the outpost for the Steel Rangers so my family could have a place to live that wasn't the old bunker. I also started up Equestrian Express so I could do what I always wanted to do, run a carrier business. So you moved a cartwheel for your family? He chuckled again. No, back then there was no cartwheel. Nope, there was only two or three Steel Rangers and my family. And then, when Equestrian Express started and its reputation sparred, I started getting caravans stopping here to rest and trade. After some time, I started telling them that if they could always stay and build a town if they wanted. Soon, I had ponies setting up shops and buildings. Five years after I started Equestrian Express, Cartwheel was a new town and a big center of trade for the new Pegasus area. I looked back at him. Wait, so you started Cartwheel? That I did. Well, White Oak and myself, I should say. This is our town, Shadow. That's why I decided to stay here and become a Sentinel. I have to ask, what does this have to do with my father? I asked. Your father came here because back in those days, I was known as the best courier in New Pegasus. I had more contacts than the Red Talons, and it wasn't strange for ponies to come to me to see if I could help them find some pony, or to get word to the other towns about some pony's lost loved one. Even ponies in the Enclave knew me. That's why he came here and asked for my help. He knew you two were last seen in Cartwheel, and I was the best pony to ask for help from. So you met him, and what did you do? I told him I'd keep an eye out for you and Grimm. I also told him where Stable 28 was. You knew where the stable was? I sure did. Vane learned it from a mare a year or so before you went there. She gave the location to me before she started her undercover work there, just in case she needed my help. Funny. I thought you and Vervain didn't get along well, I said. We didn't. But she still trusted me, and she does still care about me. That's why she came back to the area when she became a knight. We've never been close, but I respect her as much as she does me. The real problem we have is that I still see her as my little filly, even though she's a grown mare. I can see how that'd be irritating. I said with a laugh. But still, why tell me all of this? I figured you deserved to know. Also, your father told me that if you ever got out and you needed him, then I should give you something. He said, pulling out a box laying in his desk closer to him. What is it? I asked. He opened the box and pulled out a small crystal that looked like it was hooked on a short chain. He said that you would know what this was and to make sure you got it when things looked hopeless. The crystal looked faded and dull. It also had a large crack running down its center. I reached out with my magic and took it from the old buck. I looked closer at it. I... I think I've seen this before, but I can't remember what it is or where I saw it. He said it was an heirloom passed down in his family. He said it was given to the oldest child when they become of age. But that's all I know. But why give it to you? I have no idea. But it looked quite scared, like something bad was going to happen. Then something hit me. Wait, you said he showed up the same day I went in the stable? Yes. He looked like hell when I met him. He was acting a little like his life was in danger. He made me swear I'd get this to you. Then I gave him the information that he wanted. Told him I'd watch for you, and then he flew out of here like hell was on his hooves. But... Red Pony said he died a week before I went into the stable. If you saw him after the fight with the rangers, then that means he didn't die in the fight. Box Tape looked confused. You mean your father was the pony who led the stupid charge against the rangers ten years ago? 
I thought the rangers killed all the ponies who were there. So did every pony else, I said. That means my dad still has to be alive. Slow down, Shadow. Just because he was alive then doesn't mean that he's alive now. I know, but at least there might be some small chance that he's out there somewhere. True, but even if he is, you still don't know if he's still sane. I don't care. Once I'm finished with Mom, I'll find him next and I'll help him any way I can. I said. I'm sure you will. If any pony can do it, it's you, Shadow. Box tape said with a smile. We both sat there for a long moment, both looking at the pictures on the walls. Something was eating away at my curiosity, so I asked about Wisp. So what happened to that mare friend of yours? Who? Wisp? He asked. Yeah, you said she had eyes on another buck? To my surprise, his face fell again. It ain't a happy story. Did... Did she die? I asked. Worse. The buck she fell for was obsessed with some cult following out near Los Alicorn. He played with her heart, brainwashed her into becoming a member of the cult. And they tried to attack the rangers a few years after I married White Oak. We slaughtered them. Wisp lasted the longest during the fight, and I was the one who put an end to her madness. Oh. I'm sorry. He smiled a little. Don't be. It was sad to see her turn into that monster. But in the end, killing her was the best thing for her. The cult played around with the taint. Most of the ponies in it had some kind of mutation. Wisp was not the mare that I used to know. She was just a crazy Pegasus mare who needed to be put out of her misery. It's the same with the ghouls. They ain't ponies anymore. Just mindless monsters. Not... All ghouls, I said, thinking of Nexus. True, not all ghouls. Though, no matter what, every ghoul will turn feral. Ghouls who still have their wits always have something to keep their minds occupied. That's how they keep them going feral. But in the end, they always turn. Some hold out longer than others, but it always happens. And that's kind of a sad fate. That's the wasteland, Shadow. Every pony has a sad fate in the end. That's why you can't think too much about it. In the end, it isn't what matters. Same for where you started out in life. No, it's what you do with your life between the beginning and the end that matters, he said. I guess you're right. All this talk is making me think about my dad more. Where he is, or what's really been happening to him. And something else came to mind. I have to tell Nightshade. He's my dad's best friend. If he knew Dad was still alive, he'd start to search for him right away. Maybe, but... Boxtape started to say. And then he stopped, and something flashed in his eyes. Wait. Did you say... Nightshade? Yeah. He's the pony who's been helping me in the Enclave. He's the new High Council pony? I just remembered. Fuck, I had no idea. But now I'm sure... I looked at him with hope in my own eyes. What did you remember? I know where. Box tape was cut off by a loud boom from outside. What the hell was that? No idea, but it sounds like a bomb went off. A moment later, a beeping sound came out of my pit buck. Follow, uh, looking down at it, I saw a flashing message on the screen. Incoming transmission from Dragon Mountain. What's this? I asked. Box tape looked at the low ceiling. But nothing else happened, so we turned to look at my pit buck. You got a transmission from some pony. But do you know who lives out there? I don't even know where Dragon Mountain is. It's from Eastern Equestria, he said. Okay, but I don't like this. I said, clicking the button on my pit buck to open the broadcaster. Hello? Who is this? It's me, Watcher. I would have sent a sprite bot to your location, but I haven't been able to find you, and once I realized you were in cartwheel, I couldn't get one to you in time. That's why I'm transmitting right to your pit buck. 
Watcher? How do I know it's really you? Box Tape just sat back and listened as Watcher went on. We don't have time for this. We do if I don't know who you really are. Any pony can just say they're Watcher. Fine. We last spoke at Winopolis. I told you I hope someday you'll see the path that you've chosen is the wrong one. But for now, you're blinded with rage like I used to be. Open your eyes and take a look at yourself. Then, tell me, what, did you not become the thing you want to destroy? I was going to tell you more, but I lost connection with the sprite bot. I blushed a little. Okay, I believe you. Why are you contacting me through my pip buck? I didn't even know you could do that. It's not hard. Any pip buck with a broadcaster can be transmitted as long as you know how the ID code for it. I got yours when I first helped you hack into the first layer of protection, he said. But that doesn't matter right now. You need to get out of cartwheel right now. I felt eyes run down my back. Why? Yeah, whoever you are, I'd like to know that too, Box Tape said. Watcher didn't speak for a moment, then he asked. Is that Box Tape? Yes, it is. Who are you? I'm just someone who's been keeping an eye on things in the wasteland for the past two centuries. I know you because you're a well-known pony around New Pegasus, but it still doesn't matter. Shadow, the pelican is heading right towards Cartwheel. I picked up transmission from the Elder from Los Holocon branch of the Steel Rangers. He's coming to take you into custody, Watcher said. Why would Wolfsbane come after me? I don't know, but you can't let him get you. If that Mark II is so important as you say, then you need to get as far away from him as you can. Box Tape took hold of the pip box, saying in a harsh voice, Watcher, was it? Are you sure it's the Pelican and not some ship from the Enclave? I know the difference between a Thunderhead and a Zeppelin, old buck. As far as I know, it's the only working Zeppelin in the Wasteland. If my reports are true, that thing has enough firepower to keep the Enclave away from it, and take down any pony who goes after it, he said. As we spoke, another loud boom echoed far outside, followed by the door to Equestrian Express slamming open and Nora yelling, Shadow, where are you? Thank you, Watcher. I'll be sure to get away as quick as I can. Be sure that you do. I'll see if I can get you some help. Watch her out, he said, then ended the transmission. As he did, I yelled up the stairs. Aura, I'm down here. What's going on? She came to a stop at the steps, looking down at me. I don't know, but some big airship just destroyed the east wall of cartwheel. Box tape put a hoof on my shoulder, saying, That watcher's right. You need to get out of here. If Wolfsbane's after you, then you need to run. Trust me when I say this, you can't win against him. Get to Stable 28. I know you were banished from there, but I'm sure over my milkshake will let you in for this. Once there, use Vervain's terminal to contact the rangers of the Hidden Sands. What will they do? Sapphire killed Apple Slice, from the looks of it, and I can't see her helping us to with a fight against the other rangers. Maybe, but she still needs to know that Wolfbane is attacking ponies in her area. No matter who they are, that goes against ranger code. If you can't get yourself to contact her, then try and get a transmission to Gigi or Apollo. They can help. Now go! He's right, Shadow. We can't stick around here. Aura said, coming down and taking my hoof in her talon. What about Windthrasher and the rest? I asked. They'll be fine. The Wingnut can come with us and Stardust will make sure Windthrasher's okay. If Wolfbane is after you, then you're the one that needs to run. Aura said. Fine. I don't like this, I said as I took a second to hug the old buck, saying, Thanks for telling me about Dad. He hugged me back. Stay safe. I followed Aura as she led me up the steps and back out of Equestrian Express. As we got to the streets, I saw ponies running and screaming, trying to get away from something. Then I saw them. Ponies in power armor were marching into cartwheel from the east side entrance. As they moved, they were firing at the fleeing ponies. There were only five of them, but with their power armor and heavy weaponry, there was no way for the ponies of Cardwheel to defend themselves. Aura, those are steel rangers. Why are they killing the ponies here? I have no idea, but we can't let this stand. Call my mom and tell her we need the red talons, Aura said as she pulled her energy spear off her back. I was just about to do that when a scream from a griffin echoed up in the air. Looking up, I saw six griffins diving down towards Cartwheel. I don't think we have to, Aura. Looks like they're already here. That doesn't make sense. She started to say. 
Then the griffins flipped around and landed in front of three fleeing ponies. Three of the griffins opened fire, killing the ponies before they even knew what was going on. Oh, fuck no! I said, pulling out my plasma rifle and entering sats. I targeted the three who just killed the town ponies and fired. The first one went down as a blast of green goo blew his head into nothing more than chunks of meat. The second screamed as his wing melted, and the third dodged and shot at me. Aura was faster than the other griffin. As the last griffin tried to take a shot at me, Aura's energy spear glowed brighter and she slashed at the other griffin. A thin line of green flew at the griffin. He tried to dodge that one too, but wasn't fast enough. As he tried to jump into the air, the green light cut him in two. They aren't red talons, Aura said. I don't know who they are, but no red talon would attack Cartwheel like this, no matter how much it got paid. I ran over to check on the other ponies. They were all dead. Then I looked at the dead griffins and saw the gray band they had around their forelegs. Aura, they're the unchained talons. She swore, then dodged out of the way as a bullet flew towards her. Turning around, I saw the five steel rangers aiming at us. Aura saw this too and yelled, Shadow, get out of here! She didn't have to tell me twice. I teleported a moment before they opened fire. I reappeared on the other side of them and fired my own rifle at them. It didn't do too much, though. Their armor was thick, and even with how powerful Mom's plasma rifle was, it couldn't do much to steel ranger armor. Two of them turned towards me as the other three started firing at Aura again. I pulled out Dreamwalker and opened fire, but at this range the bullets only left small scratches on the shiny silver armor. The pony closest to me laughed. Funny. I thought the courier mare would know better than to try to shoot Steel Ranger power armor with normal ammo. Why are you here? I yelled, firing another round at his head, but it just bounced off. The other spoke up. Elder Wolfsbane demanded we bring you to him, dead or alive. Fuck him. I said, this time taking a minute to aim Dreamwalker better. Then I fired. The bullet slammed into the first pony's visor and he went down hard. See? Your armor has a weak spot. The other pony growled. You'll pay for that runt! He opened fire, but I teleported again. When I reappeared closer to Expression Express, I remembered another weapon I had. One that cut through Pegasi armor like butter. Would it work on Steel Ranger armor? I pulled out the sword I found in the absent ruins and attacked. The Steel Ranger twisted around as I attacked. He tried to kick me, but I ducked under his attack and jammed the sword up and under the chin of his helmet. For a second, I felt resistance. Then the blade glowed a little and sank deep into his helmet. Blood flowed down the sword and pulled onto the ground as the pony started to twitch. The rifles on his armor firing wildly before he fell to the ground. I pulled the sword out and looked at it in awe. Damn. You are one fucking sharp sword. Shadow, I could use a little help. Aura yelled. Looking towards Aura, I saw her trying to dodge two of the Steel Rangers as they fired miniguns up at her. One was already lying dead. His head was a few feet away from his body. I ran towards the other two, and before they knew what hit them, I jumped on one's back and stabbed down the back of his head. Once again, the blade sank into the armor like it wasn't even there. The other pony saw his comrade go down and turned his guns on me. I jumped off the dead ranger just as the spray of bullets flew. I tried to dodge behind a building, but two more steel rangers fell from the sky and landed on the other side of me. Aura dove at the one who was trying to kill me and started to stab him with her spear, but he was too fast. He dodged away and bucked her away. She screamed and she flew through the air and slammed against the wall of Question Express. Then the stallion turned his attention back to me. We are the Steel Rangers of Los Alicorn. Courier Mare Shadow Star, you will come with us or die. I looked back and saw the other two had blocked any way I could run. So I looked back to the Steel Ranger who had just spoke. You can fuck off. I'm not going anywhere with you. Fine with us. You can just die here then. It's easier that way. He said as his minigun's barrel started to spin. A second later, a hole appeared in his head right before a loud gunshot echoed off the buildings around us. His body flew a few feet, and he didn't get back up. Back down the road, closer to Silver's old home, stood Stardust and Yaksha. Stardust was aiming down the scope of the rifle he stole from Stable 97. Yaksha was doing the same with her own sniper rifle, a trail of smoke coming from its barrel. Yeah, 
I think you should make sure the ponies you're going after don't have armor-piercing rounds before you decide to attack them, Stardust said. His goofy smile planted on his lips as he spoke around the bit of his rifle. One of the other Steel Rangers, who sounded like a mare, yelled, You should watch what you say, Pegasus. We aren't scared of the fucking Enclave or a zebra who made a lucky shot. Stardust fired next and blew a hole in the mare. You talk too much. He focused on the other two rangers. I'd run before you end up like them. I heard a little noise behind me. Quickly, I turned around, and one of my other two left was about to attack me. I heard another shot, and that steel ranger fell instantly. Ah, <sighs> stupid pony not listening. I hate stupid ponies. I smiled and looked back at the last steel ranger. I'd do as he says. He is one of the best snipers to ever come out of the Enclave. Why should we run? Do you think this is all we have? The Steel Ranger said. They also sounded like a mare. Hard to tell when they wear all that armor. We have over a hundred ponies on a pelican. There's no way you can take us all. As she spoke, two more Steel Rangers fell from the sky, climbing into the ground with a loud boom. Looking up, I saw where they were coming from. A huge airship was floating over Cartwheel. I had no idea something that big could even fly, let alone float over a town like this. As I looked up, I saw how fucked we really were. Lying around the pelican were swarms of griffins, a few in griffin power armor, the rest armed for war. Even worse were more ponies in power armor falling from the ship and landing all over Cartwheel. As they did, screams started to echo around the streets, and the small town, along with gunfire, or the sound of laser rifles going off. The mayor started to laugh. I'm Star Paladin Iron Tail. If you don't come with us willingly, Carrier, then we'll kill every last pony in this town. I didn't know what to do. There was no way we could get out of this. Even if I was able to escape, there was no way I could leave the ponies from Cartwheel to die. Then a booming voice echoed out of the Question Express's door. Y'all better stand down before y'all do something you regret. I turned and saw Box Tape standing in the doorway of his shop. He was once again in his beautiful set of power armor. The cape on one shoulder that bore the symbol of the Steel Rangers, flapping a little in the slight breeze. Box Tape, you know you can't use that armor again? The other Steel Rangers looked at the old buck in his armor, and they all took a step back. The mayor, who spoke before saying, That can't be him. Box Tape ignored me and said, that's right. I'm Sentinel Box Tape of the Steel Rangers. I'm ordering you to stand down and cease this attack on my home. The Rangers looked confused on what to do. The mayor shook her head and then said in a respectful voice, Sentinel, we can't do that. We have orders from Elder Wolfsbane to capture the courier. Your elder isn't here right now, Paladin. Even if he was, you're not in Los Alicorn. As you know, a sentinel like myself holds the right to command any steel ranger in place of an elder, especially when you're all in my home territory. Now stand down. As I watched, I saw more steel rangers slowly walking up to join the first ones, all their eyes locked on the old buck. One of them moved closer to the mare, saying, Star Paladin. I think we should. You know the rules. He is a sentinel. Another buck jumped forward, yelling, He's nothing more than an old buck who should know better than to try and tell us what to do. The stupid steel ranger opened fire. Box tape moved so fast it was almost hard to see. One minute he was standing just outside of his home. The next he was a few feet away from the ranger who opened fire. A large gun popped out of his armor and blasted into the ranger. He screamed as the bullet ripped through his chest, spraying all over the other rangers, who stood a few feet away. Another stallion attacked Box Tape, but the old buck twisted around and kicked him so hard his body flew back, knocking over a few ponies. Then Box Tape yelled, The next pony to attack me or my town will be sorry! If one more of them dies, I'll kill all of you! Oh, is that so, old buck? A familiar voice said over us. Looking up, I saw none other than Gina flying down towards Box Tape. She was wearing a set of Griffin Power Armor, like she did when she was in Stable 28, and she had two large guns on the back 
and a glowing energy spear, much like Aura's, only with a deep red glow. She landed a few feet away and pointed a spear at box tape. I take it you're the old Steel Ranger who used to work for Hidden Sands. It's been a long time, box tape. How's the wife? Box tape growled as he spoke. Gina, I should have known you had something to do with this too. Let me guess. Wolfsbane hired you to help destroy my town. She grinned. Nope. He hired us to capture Shadowstar and kill you. He said the rest of the town could live or die, but he didn't care. Aura pointed her own spear at Gina, yelling, What the fuck is wrong with you, Aunt Gina? Why would you work for a pony who wants to kill so many ponies? They didn't do anything wrong. Ah, hello, Aura. Still running around with a shrimp, I see. Stay out of this. If you do, I won't have to kill you. Go ahead and try, Aura yelled. Box tape put up a hoof, saying, This isn't the time to be fighting with your family, Aura. Get Shadow and your friends out of here. But, Box tape, we can... She started to say, No, I said get them out of here, now! Box tape interrupted. I'll buy you the time you need. What about the town's ponies? I asked. Don't worry about them. They know what to do. We have an escape plan that was meant to keep them safe if the raiders ever attacked us. But it can still work on the Steel Rangers, too. Now leave. Oh, I don't think so, old buck. I have a job to do, and I won't fail my boss. She looked back at the Steel Rangers, who were still standing around, not sure what to do. Elder Wolfsbane said to capture the courier or kill her. Same for her friends. Now get to it! The star pallet and iron tail said, But the sentinel said to stand down. He ain't nothing more than a has-been. Who do you fear more? This old fart or Wolfsbane? Gina said with an evil smile. All the steel rangers turned towards us, and every last one of them aimed their weapons towards us. I swore and ran for it as box tape opened fire. I didn't see what happened, but I heard Gina scream, and a flash of red lit up the sky and the buildings around us as Aura, Yaksha, Stardust, and I ran. As we got closer to Silver's home, I saw Wingnut standing next to the door with Windthrasher, who still looked pretty worse for wear. We have to run, I yelled. What's going on? Windthrasher asked, looking scared. No time to explain. We have to get out of here before we end up as the next ponies to die, I said. Stardust took hold of Wingnut and tossed him to me. Take the kid. I'll cover us from the sky. I grabbed Wingnut and my magic and set him down on my back as I ran down the streets of Cartwheel. Wingnut, if we have any spark grenades, get them ready. Way ahead of you, Shadow, he said as he started to dig in my saddlebags. Windthrasher flew close to me. Her breathing was labored. It was easy to make out as she flew. Shadow, where are we going? Is there a safe place around here? Stable 28's the only place that Wolfbane can't get into. I said as I saw the other entrance to Cartwheel getting closer. But I thought you said you were banished. She asked, her yellow eyes falling on me. I was, but I'm sure Milkshake will let me get my life in danger. If not, I can at least try and get everybody safely in there. No way, Nora said over to me. We all get in or we all stay out here. We aren't leaving you behind. That's right, Shadow. We're all in this together, Stardust said as he flew higher. I think I see a few town ponies near the entrance. I saw them too. One of them was Dr. Purpleheart. He saw us running to the exit as he started to wave his hooves, yelling, Hurry! As we got closer, a deep boom filled the air, and a ball of red light flew down from the pelican and slammed into the ground right next to the gate. The ponies screamed as the ball exploded, ripping the gate and most of the wall to shreds. Pony bodies flew through the air as they were blown off their hooves, their death screams horrible to hear. Then the concussion from the blast hit us, and we were thrown back by the force of the blast. Stardust crashed to the ground, along with Aura and Wind Thrasher. Wingnut and I were both thrown back and sent rolling across the dirt road. I shook my head and spat blood on the ground. Then I looked at what was left of the gate. It was nothing but scrap metal lying around some small crater. 
The ponies that had been at the gate were all lying around it, most of their bodies just large chunks of meat. Then I saw my friends. They weren't dead, but they looked as bad as I felt. I started to get up, but I felt a sharp pain in my right foreleg. Looking over, I saw I was trapped under a large pile of rock that must have been part of the street a moment ago. I couldn't tell if anything was broken or not, but it hurt like hell. I tried using my magic to get the stone off, but it was too heavy. Fuck! Aura was next to me a moment later. Shadow, you okay? Apart from having my hoof crushed by a giant rock, yeah, I'm fucking fantastic! I said through the pain. Is everyone else okay? We're fine, apart from a few scrapes and bruises, Wingnut said. We have to get this off her, Aura. Aura was already trying to move the rock. Yeah, I'm trying, boss, but it's fucking heavy. Maybe I can help. I heard the voice of Ravane say from a few feet away. I looked over and saw her standing there in a set of power armor I hadn't seen since I was a filly. It wasn't as shiny as it used to be. It had a small bits of rust on it. I smiled, saying, Great timing, Auntie Vervain. She moved over to the rock and put her front hooves against it, and with a mighty heave and help from Mora, she was able to shift it enough for Stardust to pull me free. Once I was out, my foreleg started to throb with horrible pain. Holy shit, that hurts! Aura took a moment to look over my hoof as she gave me a healing potion, saying, It's not broken, but you'll have a nasty bruise for a while. This should help a bit. I may be able to brew something to help once we are free of this, Yaksha said. I got to my hooves, keeping as much of my weight off my right foreleg as I could. I'll be fine for now. Vervain, where'd you come from? I thought you went to overlook the bodies of the dead rangers. I did, but then I saw the pelican flying over. I knew something was wrong. I told Sandstorm to get Lonely Hearts out of here and to find help. I came around the outside of town, trying to see what I could do. I also needed to get my old set of power armor. Luckily, it was still where Grim left it. She said, looking around. This is horrible. I can't believe Wolfsbane would allow this to happen. It fits the stories I've heard about him, Nora said. Now we can't stay here. Box tape couldn't hold them off forever. We need to get to Stable 28. Vervain looked at Aura, saying, Why would you go there? It's the only safe place close to here, I said. No, it's not. Wolfsbane knows where the stable is. If you go there, you'll be putting everyone in the stable in danger, Vervain said. Ow. It's not like he can go in once the door's closed. He can. He's a very smart pony. He's very good at hacking software, just like me. He's broken into stables before. Not if I lock it down with a Mark II, I said. True, but all, you also have to realize that if he figures out where you're going, he'll just cut you off, using the pelican. He can reach the stable way before you do, Vervain said. Shit. Then what can we do? I yelled. Vervain's head turned and she looked in the distance at the tall white spire that led into the clouds. We go there. The Stargazer Labs is under the MASCBS tower, and only a pony like Shadow can unlock the door. If we go there, there's no way Wolfsbane will be able to get in. Not even a pony like me can hack our way past the generic scanner. But we still risk him finding out where we're going. He can head us off, I said. No, he can't. Because if we head for the tower, he'll think we're going for Stable 28. He knows that's the first place you'd head to. He wouldn't even think that you'd be trying to go for the tower. Aura smiled. You have a point. Though, even if we do get in there and hide, how long can we hold out before we'd have to leave? I'm sure the place doesn't have much we can use to live off of for a long time. It has food and water enough to last us a month. Wolfsbane can't hold out that long for us to come out. If he does, he risks the Enclave attacking the Pelican and his team. His branch of the Steel Rangers are tough, but they can't hold out against Stratus for long. He doesn't have his entire branch with him right now, anyway, Vervain said. Now, let's get moving. We're running out of time. I agree. Well, let's get going now. We can plan later, I said, then I thought of something. What about box tape? Vervain sighed. He'll be okay. Wolfsbane hates him like no other, but he won't kill my father. He knows that if he does, the other branches of Steel Rangers will retaliate. A Sentinel is a highly respected rank. He can't risk angering too many branches of Steel Rangers. 
I closed my eyes for a moment, then said, Fine, let's go. I'll show you the way, Vervain said, starting to run towards the gate. Something shot out the sky and landed in the middle of the crater, made from the blast of the airship. It was a pony in black power armor. The armor didn't look like any Steel Ranger power armor I'd seen before. It had two horns coming out behind the ears and sparking nodes on the tips. The visor was blood red. It had spikes on its back and two large cannons on each side. The hooves of the armor came down to sharp points. The tail had a blade running down its length. Vervain took a step back, saying, Wolfsbane. Hello, Vervain. Long time no see. The voice of Elder Wolfsbane said from inside the hellish-looking armor, I thought that you died. A minigun popped out of Vervain's armor as she yelled, Shadow, get out of here now! As she started to fire, Elder Wolfsbane dodged, and the horns of his helmet glowed a bright blue light. Then a beam of electricity flew at Vervain, throwing her back down the street. She didn't get back up. As I watched the mare who raised me get blasted to the side, I yelled, Vervain! Then I heard her say from inside of her armor, Get out of here, Shadow. I'm fine. He just shut down my armor. You need to run! Wolfsbane ignored her, pointing one of the large guns at me. Is that any way to treat an elder of the Steel Rangers? Now, Shadow, it's time for you to stop running. You aren't taking her! Stardust yelled, pointing his gun at the elder. And who's going to stop me? You, he said. Damn right, Stardust yelled. Wolfsbane started to laugh. <laughs> you can try, but I do believe that I have the upper hoof. What do you mean? Windthresher asked. Her eyes were starting to turn red again. Her voice still sounded like hers, though not Sharp's. A few seconds later, Gina landed next to us and pointed her glowing spear at Stardust. Eight other griffins landed as well, and several more ponies in power armor came running down the road. Stardust looked at the forces and slowly lowered his weapon. I see your point. Aura looked pissed. She knew she didn't stand a chance, so she lowered her spear. I sighed and shook my head. Fine, Wolfsbane. I'll go with you. But please stop attacking Cartwheel. He ignored me. Instead, he looked over at Gina, saying, What happened to the Sentinel? Not sure. He was fighting more of your rangers when I flew off. He's a tough old pony. We should go before he shows up. Knowing that old fuck, he's probably called from help from the Hidden Sands. Take the courier into custody and take her to the Pelican. Same for her friends and Vervain, Elder Wusbane said, slowly walking past me to look at Cartwheel. No problem, boss. And what should we do with the rest of the town? Gina asked. The elder turned his head towards us, saying, Burn this shithole to the ground and kill every last one who lives here. I want this place to be a symbol for what happens when you have a pony like the courier. Once you're done with that, send a transmission to that Pegasus Nightshade and tell him that if he wants to see the courier alive again, he will find Grimoire's spell and give her to me. I whipped out Dreamwalker and pointed at Elder Wolfsbane. I'm not going to let you hurt the ponies here. Wolfsbane just laughed. And how are you going to stop me, child? My shadow rippled, and for a moment, Orichalus was standing right there. I won't let you hurt my niece, Wolfsbane. To my shock, Wolfsbane just laughed. So that's where you've been hiding pride. I knew you didn't die in that explosion back in Appleton. But I had no idea you'd tag along in the mare who tried to kill you. Sharp blades formed on my uncle's back. I'll say it again, Wolfsbane. You won't hurt Star. Wolfsbane just laughed. Then turned a, to a unicorn scribe that I hadn't noticed before. She had a pink coat, dark orange mane, and eyes. Take care of that trash, will you? The mare smiled as she looked at Orichalis. No problem, sir. Orichalis looked at the young mare, saying, So, you want to be the first to die, huh? Fine with me. The unicorn pulled a white gem from her robes and cast a spell over it. There was a flash of bright light, followed by a scream from my uncle. A moment later, he was gone. 
and the white gem was now black. No, it wasn't black. The black was moving inside the gem. Somehow, this unicorn was able to trap Oricalus inside that gem. She started to laugh. <laughs> well, look at that. Grim's old notes about her brother were correct. You can trap darkness inside this thing. Wolfsbane nodded, saying, Grim is usually right when it comes to things like that. Now, let's get out of here. No, I started to say. Then the unicorn looked at me and smiled. Shut your yap, bitch. Her horn flashed and a spell rolled over us all. My body couldn't move. Same for all my friends. My eyes were locked open as the griffins took us all and started to fly us to the pelican. As they did, their massive cannons on the flying ship started to fly fire. Buildings exploded, ponies died, the ground below cracked. Then a smaller cannon fired at the Equestrian Express. The building imploded and crumbled into nothing more than broken stone and burring wood. I watched the town as I wanted to call my home one day, as it died. The ponies who took me in and supported me like I was one of their own died. All in one. I was flown higher into the sky. I saw box tape looking up at us, over a dozen dead steel rangers, and more griffins dead around his hooves. As we were taken away, all I could do was wish that some pony, any pony, would come save us. That some pony would do something to stop what was happening. But no pony was coming. There were no real heroes in the wasteland. Not even the courier could stop a pony like Wolfsbane. The wolf in sheep's clothing that I was so stupid to trust when he asked for my help. The pony who just killed Cartwheel and the Equestrian Express. I'm not the courier anymore. Footnote. 42% to level. Error. 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 Please reload.